Alabama only three starters back on offense. They lost a lot to the NFL. Mm-hmm. They bring more back on the defense. But the big question will be Bryce Young at quarterback. Bryce Young, who reportedly now is making upwards of a million dollars from NIL About endorsements. grand is the number of the figure I saw, which is not a bad payday. It's a good deal. Good deal for him. Good for him. Yep. So how do we feel about this next era of Alabama? Is Alabama now gettable given the turnover <laughs> on offense? Likely not. But uh, no, and it's not just the the turnover on offense. It's Steve Sarkeesian moving on. Kyle Flood, who coached the offensive line, moving on. They're, you know, the assistance and coordinator situation because they do return Pete Golding there. uh their defensive coordinator. So, but the the attrition continues, and it continues every year that this staff get plundered and the the roster get plundered by the NFL and guys who ultimately can't crack the two deep move on to other programs in waves. But that's to be expected when you recruit as well and guys come into the program as prepared to succeed in a, within a year or two. It's just it's all sort of par for the course for Alabama. And so we go through these we go through these previews with a quick look back at 2020, the curb appeal for the 2021 uh, roster and situation and season ahead. And then the the tank, what's in the tank in terms of a prediction and what the traffic looks like. So that's what the schedule looks like. We're going with an automotive theme here. I think we have baby driver sounds since that was shot in Atlanta and one fun dumb and dumber one. We have this one. I'm a driver. I love that sound. And then we have it's great. this. Was he slow? No. Mm. And then. <laughs> I don't know what the context is for any of these. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. And but then we're we have just Dumb celebrating Baby Driver. We have Dumb and Dumber. Uh, I can get 70 miles to the gallon on this hog. Whoa. Yeah. Anyway, continue. Okay, so I, I'm not going to belabor the 2020 point for Alabama. There was It was nonstop destruction from what is clearly an all-time, all-time offense that, as you mentioned, loses a bunch of pieces, notably Mac Jones, uh, Devontae Smith, who took home the Heisman, Najee Harris, a bunch of offensive linemen. Uh, the wonderful news is... And by the way, the defense was really good, too. They, they let up, I mean, points to basically Ole Miss and Florida and nobody else. And that includes no. a good Notre Dame offense, a good Ohio State offense, and they just couldn't get anything done. So they won the national championship comfortably. Um, if if you're a win connoisseur, shout out to Ben Golliver for that term. Um, this is the team for you because they're going to keep on winning. Um They've got a great young offensive line. I don't know how much of Evan Neal you've watched, both in season and off season. It's very good. He just jumped up and kind of did the splits after doing a crazy vertical on some mats. Like he is, he's Thanos. Like he he's moving from right tackle to left tackle. The guys fighting to take over at right tackle are like all five star dudes from across the country stepping into the position. They're going to be great. They're deep at running back. They have all sorts of options. There's no obvious obvious stud. There are three dudes who will probably take that mantle. John Mechie highlights the receiving core uh, in terms of guys who are coming back. And he, you know, there's a high bar there with recent Alabama receiver success. But they've recruited, you know, both the line and the receiver position really well. Jaleel Billingsley certainly came on uh, during the season last year as an additional weapon at tight end. They're in a great position. Bryce Young is interesting to me. Bryce Young is the presumed starter at quarterback. He played a little bit last year and obviously got extensive work in the spring. He's not big. He's about six feet tall, was the number one quarterback recruit a couple years ago. And he doesn't play with the fluidity that you might expect for somebody like the the polish is there in an unorthodox way. Like he can extend plays. He's not. Johnny Manziel I don't know what the actual comparison is because his arm strength like he's got a lot of pop on his arm his athleticism is obviously there and his understanding of the offense especially as they move from Sark to Bill O'Brien looks like it's there and will continue I'm sure with fall camp to be there but there's not that clear step into the pocket killer in him at this point it seems maybe it's his height whatever that there was with Mac Jones and, and Tua is there a little bit of Baker Mayfield in him? I ask that seriously. I mean, what, what sure. do you mean? I mean? What do you mean by he doesn't extend the plays with fluidity? No, no, he extends plays. It's more of the you. You looked at how comfortable Mac Jones was and Tua was, sort of 
the understanding of the offense, stepping in, immediately understanding okay. how and when people are going to be open. There's, I think there's more improvising to Bryce Young's game. Okay. So yeah, maybe Baker Mayfield, Johnny Manziel, Kyler There's a Murray. Little bit of, a little bit of Ian Book in him, perhaps. Dare perhaps we say. some Ian Book. I, I would hope a little higher ceiling. But um, I, 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 I think the best of Bryce Young is Heisman caliber. I just think he is going to go about things this year in a slightly different way, and that's okay because every year is a you know a new year. Uh, he's, Dan is so profound. I know. <laughs> um, so he's fascinating. I mean, the, the athleticism is off the charts. The arm is really strong. It looks like. I, I can't wait to watch him, but it's going to be a different experience. He, he doesn't have the physical talent, and Tua wasn't huge either, but I think he, he seemed a little bit, built a little bit sturdier than Bryce Young. It's going to be great. It's going to be crazy entertaining, and they're going to win a ton of games. Um, Schedule-wise, for any, up, any other team, it would be kind of daunting at the start with Miami and Florida away from home, Miami neutral site, uh, in the first three weeks of the season. Um October is tricky, but that's as harsh a word I think you can use to describe Ole Miss at A&M and uh, on the road in Starkville in consecutive weeks because I, I'm i a believer in Mississippi State, first and foremost. I, I just am. Um, Ole Miss is not going to have a good defense. I don't think that's going to be troublesome, but they have, you know, Matt Corral, new receivers. You know, Elijah Moore is gone, but it's still tricky. Um, as always, they have a bye before LSU. Um, and... It's a good year to play Auburn for anybody, I think, to me. Um, so the sky's the limit, Ty. There's no clear, obvious threats, maybe nationally, to going 15-0. and 0. Yeah, yeah. If, if I had to rank the teams on their schedule with the best shots, either because of who they are or what the situation is when they're playing, I have it at one Florida, two A&M, Florida because the game's in the swamp, two A&M, uh, three LSU. What about jo- one Georgia in the SEC championship? Okay. Uh, I, I put Georgia ahead of Florida. Yeah. Um, and I know the game is at AM. It's at Kyle Field. But because we saw that game really get away from AM last year and Florida, now look, like both of these teams are different, starting different quarterbacks. I think situationally, it's at least nice that Florida gets Bryce Young early. I think that's an advent, advantageous situation in the swamp, whereas when they actually when they get A and M, um, would be a little bit more seasoned in terms of Bryce Young. So, so de- defensively, O'Brien. defensively speaking, though, mm-hmm. they have much more back on defense. I'm assuming because of that, it, there are fewer questions that you have about the defense. Like it's just another Alabama defensive unit. Therefore, dot dot dot. It's going to be virtually impregnable sort of yeah i mean the linebackers are there's there's a, a good mix of youth and experience um and this is it's actually a strength of the defense it looks like rather than you know when we saw some dylan moses uh maneuverability issues that's where you know a team like Ole Miss was able to take advantage of some linebackers in the open field I think linebacker is a, is a strength they lose Patrick Sertan obviously he was a, a really strong lockdown corner but they've recruited well enough and developed well enough there and Malachi Moore is the big sort of do-it-all guy who, who popped as a freshman so I, I think they're just going to be they're going to be great in the secondary up front there's no obvious obvious stud but they sort of replace that gravity with experience like they just have dudes back and they've recruited well enough there as well so hard to worry hard to cry about bama up front so yeah i mean it's boring but i think there are elements of this team like what bryce young does in terms of how he runs this offense what this offense looks like under bill o'brien will be fascinating but alabama's just you know they're they're starting the 400 280 yards in you're also burying the lead by not mentioning that they've got a cornerback who goes by the name Kool-Aid. Oh, yeah. Jaquincy McKinstry. Kool-Aid <laughs> McKinstry. Yeah. Kool-Aid yeah. It was not. There was some skepticism about was he doing this for NIL purposes, but he has been known as Kool-Aid for quite some time. So Kool-Aid. I hesitate to say so. Yeah. McKinstry. Yeah. So are you. Oh, how. OK. I did my preview of Georgia. Mm-hmm. You did your preview of Alabama. Correct. Presumably, these two teams are going to be on a collision course all year and eventually meet in the sure. SEC championship. Based on what you saw here from Alabama in your research, does that game concern you more than usual? 
Does JT Daniels, with what we assume to be by the time they play a healthy receiving core, um, sure. It's a neutral site game. It's a first-year starter at quarterback for Alabama. Um, there's nobody that that's clearly obvious and proven at receiver beyond John Mechie. And nobody has proven that they can shoulder the load in any way near what where Najee Harris was as a both a running back and sort of a running back used out of the backfield in the passing game. Yeah, it's crazy concerning. Yeah. But does JT Daniels make it to that game? I don't know. I don't that's know. A, we'll see. That's worrisome. So, no, I, I, there's no reason to give even a shred of a benefit of any doubt to anybody but Alabama at this point. At this point. I mean, Bill O'Brien calling the plays for Alabama is like one of the wilder things we could have brought up four years ago. <laughs> crazy, right? <laughs> Where Absolutely the sport crazy. On either level is going. Yeah. Oh. So there's there's Alabama. Hooray. So you're high on Alabama. Wow. Yeah. That's that's a real take of mine.